Method two is modeling a vessel as an equivalent pipe. When we model the vessel as an equivalent pipe, the first step is the same as when modeling the vessel as an anchor. The nozzle should be modeled as accurately as possible using flanges if necessary, a pipe run for the protruding length of the nozzle, and the nozzle flexibility element to represent the flexibility of the vessel wall. After the nozzle flexibility element is modeled, a rigid pipe element should be used to connect the piping to the center line of the vessel, shown here in purple. This is made rigid to represent the direct connection from the nozzle to the vessel. Including thermal expansion on this element will estimate the radial thermal growth of the vessel, which will automatically be applied to the attached piping at point A11. Again, due to thermal expansion, thermal movements along the length of the vessel will be different, considering the distance of each point on the vessel with respect to the vessel anchor. And again, the connected piping is supported back to the vessel in this example. So to include thermal expansion effects of the vessel on each pipe support, each support will be connected back to the center line of the vessel. So an example is shown here. The guide at point B7 is connected back to the center line of the vessel at point A3. Static earthquake and wind loads are included in this model, along with gaps and friction on our pipe supports. So a nonlinear analysis is set up here. Two analysis sets are set up to review the occasional results in both the sustained and operating cases. It's important to remember that autopipe cannot be used to check the stresses in the piping that is modeled to represent the vessel, even though results will be shown throughout that piping. You'll need to use the ASME code separately or autopipe vessel to check the stresses in the vessel itself. So there are many pros to using this method. First, it creates a more accurate stiffness model, which sets you up better for dynamic analysis and results. The vessel expansion is calculated by autopipe automatically during the analysis, so connecting the supports to the vessel accounts for the vertical expansion automatically. This is useful for wind loads, seismic loads, any other occasional loads, or a dynamic analysis. But the mass of the vessel can be much greater than the piping when you do model the vessel as equivalent pipe. So this can make it difficult to determine the modal mass extracted from the piping. We talk about this more in the modal analysis class. And lastly, a temperature gradient can easily be applied to the vessel to represent different temperature levels throughout the vessel and the thermal movements will then automatically be adjusted for the changes in temperature. There's really only two cons for this method, which revolve around it taking a bit longer. So in general, it will take longer to model. And also with this method, reference points have to be added for nozzle loads to be transferred to autopipe nozzle or autopipe vessel. So if you wish to do that, there's just another step uh, that you'll have to go through. This shows the example of applying a temperature gradient to the vessel to represent different temperature levels. So let's jump back to the workbook to go through an example of using method two. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.